Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. We have a lot of partnerships that we create in Rotary and those partnerships are created in order to help people around the world. With us today we have a special guest. Uh, we have John Kujay. John, welcome. Thank you so much. And you are with uh, and actually president of American Silkscreen, correct? That is correct. That is well, tell us a little bit about yourself, John. Well, I'm pretty much a local person. I grew up here in Santa Barbara from third grade on, went to the local schools, graduated, uh, <clears throat> went on to university, had a chance to travel, came back and started a company here, started printing t-shirts in a garage on the Mesa and uh, started a fledgling company and pretty much expanded it and here we are 40 years later. Great. So what got you into uh, silk, silk screening? It was a fledgling <clears throat> Industry. I had a, a background in uh, printing and photography, which were um, electives at the high school, Santa Barbara High School. Um, I had an interest. I excelled in them. I won a Bank of America Achievement Award, which allowed us uh, some capital to travel on in the future. Uh, and at the time, there was there was not an integration of photography into silk screening, and that was debuting at the time. And I was fortunate enough to to get involved with it when it was first coming out. <clears throat> and then that um, gave us a window and a bit of a technological edge in the, in the market. Great, great. So you actually started, uh, I would say, slightly advanced as far as the industry was concerned. Now, have you had a chance or opportunity to keep up with the times, or is it something that's changing? There's no question that the, the integration of digital into the, the media process has created uh, other, other printing forms, and they are evolving at a very quick pace. Uh, we're fortunate that we, the area that we picked our expertise in, in uh, high quality, exceptional resolution, halftone printing um, it is a, a niche market and that's allowed us to probably keep our position for as long as we have. Great, great. Yeah. Now in, in high school, uh, by the way, we went to high school together, so yes, uh, got a little bit on you on this one here. Um, you did a lot of, um, I would say, um, like Key Club, you were involved with, and a lot of other areas that are actually community-based or helping out. Was that something that was <clears throat> planned or something that you just went through? I think it was part, part and parcel to the process. I think at the time, um, you, we were pretty much expected, uh, if we had an athletic talent, to, to be involved with sports. Mm -hmm. uh, scouting was a big part of what I was involved with. Um, through scouting, their community service is, a, a bit is expected. Correct. You know, on the right. weekends, donation to community was there. Correct. Um, and the, a lot of times you, f you find yourself in situations where your friends will get you into something. So I found my way into Key Club as a process of basically who, who we're already involved with, either in sports or, or in scouts. Now, as you get into your professional life then, was that kind of included as part of the plan as you got into silk screening, or was that something that evolved into where you could give back later? I think it's, in all fairness, it's very hard to, to build a business, uh, grow a business in the first five to seven years. And, and I think in the act of, of growing your company and, and acquiring assets, putting a roof over the head of your, your family and, and your, your company uh, in this area is a difficult process. Um, and I would say we probably surfaced maybe 10 years later um, when we were in a position to actually have have uh, purchased our automated equipment, built our commercial building, and hired and, and uh, worked through uh, a stable uh, set, of, you know, set of employees. That's that, great. At that point, <laughs> uh, we, we had a little bit of breathing room, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but in, the, in the growth stages, um, you're pretty much consumed 12 hours a day. I can see that. Anymore. Well, 10 years, uh, getting your feet on the ground in 10 years, you did quite well. That's a Pretty good accomplishment in itself, so well, we give you compliments we're for that. We're fortunate to the kind of customers we were doing business with. <laughs> good. We're thankful for Well, that. you brought some pictures. Let's go ahead and jump into some of these pictures because uh, a lot of these pictures will tell the story of how much you've been involved in some of the areas that you've been able to help out with. Okay. The first picture we have is a picture of... Uh, well, this is, um, this is a camp uh, over in San Ynez for underprivileged kids, and we were approached by a long-term... Uh, friend of ours that uh, works with a church over there and he, and he asked uh, is it, could we contribute and help and give something back to these kids because they they're going to experience some new things uh, with horses and with uh, some new opportunities archery a few other things mm -hmm. so um, 
we were happy to, to contribute to them and, and give them a chance. So that was uh, underprivileged children then, specific? Yes, okay, great. Yeah. And that was through uh, Cliff Lambert, you said? That's Cliff Lambert yeah, in the yeah, Church of the Crosswords. Great. Yeah. Good Very, for him. Yeah. Okay, the next one is uh, the uh, Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation. Yeah, th they first uh, approached us uh, when th this, com this particular entity was getting started, and it's done very well. It's grown uh, to a very large, large operation. But this was a, a situation where they were, they were hoping to take some kids to a Dodger game. Mm, and, well, nice. and we just said, we'll help you. That is very nice. Yeah. Then the next picture we have? Uh, Next two are basically, uh, it has to do with an organization here that deals uh, with children with uh, some disabilities. Okay. And uh, they raise money uh, through walks, rides, et cetera. And um, so we were in a position to help them. And this is an example of where you can take uh, a finished product, help a, help a nonprofit, and then they can use that to either offset their costs or generate income and give, and give opportunities to the children. Right. Okay. So there's... They sent us a little thank you note. <laughs> that is nice. A very nice thank you note. Yeah, definitely Showed so. Showed who was involved. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Um, this picture was for some, some kids, uh, again, some, some challenged kids who had cerebral palsy, and this was a summer camp. Um, so we, we helped them with a summer camp, and, and they sent us a nice thank you note. Now, is this uh, local? Um, yeah, this was uh, probably about... 10 or 12 years ago. Okay, and, and where is the uh, actual location? I don't recognize it. You know, the I don't remember itself. where. This was, uh, it was in Santa Barbara, from my understanding. Okay. But That's basically. Uh, must be a grammar school or something, right? Something yeah, like it was a summer camp. I'm not, I don't remember exactly where it was staged, but um, we knew one of, the, one of the principals who had one of the children. So they approached us with a need, and we said, we would just like to help you. Now, uh, events like this, are those annual? Are they ongoing, or is it usually just a one-time it can go either way. Okay. Um, it can go either way. If you sometimes, if you if there's a relationship, uh, and you choose to contribute, and you and they they want to be involved with you on a regular basis. Nice. Um, nice. So we try to help them. Yeah. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. And then the next one you have. Uh... Uh, this this was a, a lady who re resided behind us uh, when we lived in Montecito. And she had a connection to uh, an orphanage uh, in Mexico. And at the time, she said, I, I, I'd be willing to take some of your product down and distribute it. So the first picture is, was handing out product at Christmas at a Santa Claus. And, okay. and uh, the next page was just how they distributed it through the, I'm not sure if it was a mission or a school. It's important to us that you just send us a picture that makes sure that the product got to the people okay. and it wasn't absorbed or seized at the border or sold for sure. or whatever. So, yeah, right, right. So we, we end up uh, just having a few pictures uh, in the company, so we just put them up there, and I, I scanned a few and brought them over. Now, these, uh, the product itself, um, was this specific to the project, or were these uh, something that no, were No, basically, uh, what happens, again, um, is that in any manufacturing process, uh, depending on how many times you're involved with it, there's a very small percentage of loss. And also, in the act of receiving your product, there's no perfect manufacturing process, even with the incoming product. So as a result, you're, you're dealing with between a half and maybe one and a half percent of, of volume per contract that is going to have, that you're going to end up with. So a lot of it has tangible value if you can think beyond that and, and not either destroy it, turn it into rags, or get rid of it according to what the terms of your contracts are. Right. So we, we early on thought that there would be a higher and better use for the product. So you actually created the model then um, and put that into your, in your uh, accounting then. Yeah. That's a great idea. So what we thought is, is uh, can, we, can, we, um, can we capture predictable losses and uh, take them somewhere where they can actually create value or opportunity? So most of these shirts then are probably just cosmetic seconds. Or... That's correct. Okay. They, they actually have uh, tan absolutely tangible use. What you're dealing with a lot of time is, is copyright, copyright distribution of registered trademarks, and how you address that with your customers within your contract, and also so it doesn't affect their market or their release date or create any conflict of interest with their own distribution cycles. So in the act of coming involved with one reaching outside the country, okaying it mm -hmm. with our customers. Right. Uh, we, we met both of those requirements and we started seeing 
the good results. Great, great. Now, do these um, the companies, the ones that contract you, um, are they aware that their product may yes. go outside? Absolutely. Yeah. I would guess they're willing to participate because actually, of the fact it, that it, it, it's worked very well for us because one of the one of the intangible benefits that that, that came to came to us is that when we uh, approached our suppliers, some of the major mills that, that distribute, you know, T-shirts to us, we said, you know, um, if a project comes up, you already do this as part of your mission statement. You contribute, you give back, you recycle. Would you be willing to give us some product that will that we want to specifically target to a project, as long as we let you know what it is? And they've, they've come forward and helped us on specific projects, oh, which is which is nice because you're getting help from the supply side as well as um, your help, which is from the, the distribution side. Mm -hmm. Great. Next picture you have is uh, another one, I believe, uh, looks like Mexico, possibly? Yeah, that's correct. This was, this was the, same, uh, the same group, just, okay. another, just another four pictures that came along with the group. Great. And yeah. it looks like a lot of product you guys were able to distribute down there. Um, <laughs> nice. Well, it's, it's nice to see, see it going uh, to people who, who need it or enjoy it or appreciate it. Now, this picture here is a little bit older, I would say. Um, do you know about when this occurred or how long ago this was? These would have been probably 94, 95, wow. 96. So we've been doing it a while. Yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Great. Yeah, this one in here, though, kind of <laughs> date itself here pretty quickly. It, it does. Yeah, and there it is. We get to I hope that's end. not a new car where you see in those pictures there. Uh, this, was a, <laughs> this was a fellow that once worked for me. He's in the left corner. Mm -hmm. uh, and he ended up... Uh, being involved with uh, with uh, both Christian and uh, Jewish operations uh, in Cuba, and he was, oh. I believe, was taking Bibles in, and he said, you know, if you have some shirts, maybe you can help us out. I, I think I can bring them in, and they'd be distributed. So, so I shook his hand and said, come by, and we'll give you some product. And okay. and he sent these pictures back to us. And Great. What's interesting is the is the cars. The cars. This, this is probably twelve <laughs> years old because. And things have changed quickly, you know, they, yeah, yes, they very, have. very quickly in, in the past five years with respect to this country. So based on the time and era, how did he get the shirts in? Did he actually have I to really, physically carry I those? I really don't know. What he said was is he was cleared to bringing X number of Bibles or religious literature, oh, okay. and, and as a result, um, he had access to these churches. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, if that's, a, if that's a, a point of distribution, let's do it. Perfect. Oh, that is great. Yeah. So that's Cuba. Okay, yeah. great. This, this picture? Uh, yeah, this is um, uh, some of the doctors that fly and donate their time uh, down in, in Mexico, Central America. And um, they've come to us and, and uh, been able to take some products. So in the act of doing what they do, they've been able to hand, hand out some of our products in, uh, to the areas where they're actually working. Very nice. Yeah. And then this was... Uh, this was another fellow business associate that retired, and uh, he ended up creating a, a flight plan around the world. And he was flying; he was flying with three other people and landing in different different areas, pretty oblique areas, way out in the Pacific. We gave him some product, and he, I told him he would have to send some pictures back. So this is some <laughs> people on a beach somewhere in Micronesia or wow. somewhere in the South wow. Pacific. <laughs> so, no, oh, that is good. <laughs> some smiling kids. Mm -hmm. And this one's in Africa. Right. Um, 1991, so that goes back to the original, original printing in the early yeah. 90s. And yeah, these are right. just some, some young kids in a, in a mission. Halloween, Isla Vista, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, that was, I, I think that was an event. So at the end of an event, if you're, right, you're you have a certain, anyways. it's dated and yeah, then there's no yeah. use. And so you want to try to do something with it. That is good. You know, and the last, I think the last page is, just uh, the ones on the left, there was a, I believe the story here is that there was a hurricane that went through um, Jamaica in that area. So then there was, there was a group that worked with us, had distribution there. So we, we gave some product and they went down there. And these other ones were just some, some other ones sitting on the wall at the time I scanned the pictures of the mm -hmm. hurricane. That was about it. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing uh, I have to say is that uh, we've been fortunate to, to partner up with you because Rotary has definitely been able to use a lot of your product as, as we do projects around the world. And I brought a few pictures with me I'd like to share with you also. Outstanding. Um, this first picture that we have is a picture that was um, 
a project that went to the Philippines. Wow. In, in the picture, we have uh, Diana McDermott, who's in the center standing next to me, and her husband, Charles, also uh, Kathy Jo Hobbs. They were actually able to put these packages together and ship those with them to uh, the Philippines, to nice. do a Philippine project. So they're very happy to get those. Uh, I don't remember how many shirts, but it's probably close to 1,000 shirts that we ended up shipping out with that one. Great. The next picture we have of her is actually at the distribution area mm -hmm. where she distributed these shirts along with um, that shipment included lights, solar lights, Unite to Lights. And so we, we kind of partnered in, did both of those together. She said for sure they could use the shirts. And so okay. that's, that was the, the project that came about. She actually carried most of those to these sites. Next picture is the uh, distribution and the, uh, the good times after getting those shirts out and put those around. So uh, nice. again, that uh, was one of the successful ones. They do come back, and I think it's almost annual now that they still move these shirts back and forth Great. for us. So Great stuff. Uh, again, your product, and we appreciate that. The next picture is a picture with uh, Hans Braun at his um, nursery. And at that nursery, and this time here, we needed to get these boxes from California to the East Coast to be shipped out to Zimbabwe. I'll be done. And those are being boxed up with, again, solar lights the in lights. these big plastic barrels. I'll be done. And so we had to get them over there, and they actually shipped them for us for no charge with the, um, the trucks that they used to move the, the foliage with the flowers. I'll be done. So it was a flower truck. And I, we filled up just about most of that flower truck. And they said, well, they got their product. So they were, they were running the truck east anyway, running, and they gave you the extra and we, space. Yeah, exactly. So we it was asked them if it was, it was, it was so perfect. Transparent to transportation cost right, to your situation. Right, right. And then the Wonderful. packages, the, the um, barrels that were shipped to Zimbabwe, those were also all included in nice. with the solar lights. So that worked out quite well. The next picture is a group that went to uh, Mexico. Uh, this is Marty Garcia and their club, the Rotary Club of uh, Santa Barbara North. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually had these uh, shirts that they took down with them for this project. Mm -hmm. And so you had the picture of distribution and some of the shirts that they took with them. Nice. And I got to admit, uh, those packages come pretty colorful. You got a pretty <laughs> good mix in a lot of those. I noticed you have shirts, hats, sweatshirts, yeah, again, a, a lot the, of different materials and items. We have a different manufacturing line, product lines. And again, if we go, if you're doing a certain amount of volume and there's, there's a certain dropout rate that's predictable, then you try to you try to find a way and a use for it mm -hmm. and and some of the biggest problems are distribution so your rotary being able to guarantee point to point distribution and and also the the ability to make sure that there's no infringement of copyright or the product is not seized or sold or distributed or the problems that come along sometimes in the third world that you might have to pay to get through certain areas it's or true. Those are, those, are, those are real considerations in, in, in less developed countries. So your ability yeah. to go point to point in a bubble has been able to probably land more product in, in a guaranteed fashion, which, which helps the supply side because they have, they have concerns uh, about what happens after the fact and how they're involved. Yeah, true. We actually had issues with the other side of that too, um, where the people receiving it or the groups receiving it some of them were uh, Islamic countries, and they said that they had to approve the um, oh, you bet. The, the print and make sure that oh, there was... Oh, you bet, because sometimes you see a, a T-shirt is just a platform for an idea <laughs> mm -hmm. or a concept, and, um, and it's very important to be respectful uh, <coughs> and not knowing what you're receiving. Right. It has right. to do with you know, our customer base after 40 years. So um, that, that would be almost uh, a prerequisite on your side. Exactly, which it usually is. We usually tell them what's included in you the bet. package. Um, the next picture we have actually is a gentleman that came to us, mm. and he wanted to move these again to the Philippines. His mm. wife's from the Philippines, and so done. these shirts were probably one of the most recent ones. These just went out about three months yeah, ago. Yeah, these look pretty current. They're pretty current. Um, tickled pink, he's happy. They go back at least once a year, so it looks like we have another uh, resource there for moving right. these shirts around. Yeah. And then the, uh, the next picture, actually the last picture we had, Hmm. is a picture of uh, a gentleman from Niger. And we had a group of Rotarians that worked with the Nomad Foundation. Really? And they said that they could, well, first they, uh, they've been moving solar lights. And yeah. I asked him about the shirts. He had heard about it. And the gentleman says, uh, Dr. Bob Skanky, he goes, we would love to take the shirts. I go, well, you know, we have anything from shirts to sweatshirts, whatever. And I didn't see how they would need it because they always wear these. Uh, oh, you bet. That, that, the clothes. Mm -hmm. And he started laughing, goes, believe it or not, 
when the temperature drops below 85, they are freezing. <laughs> so they use your shirts to actually layer up when I'll it's 85, 85 degrees. I never would have thought of it. I never, <laughs> I never would have thought of it either. <laughs> you would know where all this goes. You yeah, you really don't know. You really know, don't know. Yep. You never know where it goes. So tell us a little bit more about your operations. Um, when you talk about shirts uh, and the overruns, what, what is, uh, would you guess, guesstimate the number to be of those shirts that are using, that are going out for donations? Well, it, it depends on the volume of, of a lot of your major contracts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I would say I'm not prepared to, I can tell you probably more by cases. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I would, I would say that there was probably between 72 and 100 units to a case. Okay, and right. and then we we give or are responsible at the end of a fiscal year or as they build up to call it call rotary or to deliver to your location mm -hmm. x number of cases I have to go back uh, no, just, to just, say, just, I, it's I, been a pretty I, good I, I don't want to give you a higher or low number it's and I'm not dodging the question it's yeah, just no, I, I really I'd say there would be a minimum of of 14 to 25 cases on a regular That's basis. That's about what I'm thinking. Um, Depending, again, over time and, and doing and based Doing on a rough guesstimate on what I think we've moved around, it's between two and 4,000 units, uh, shirts specific, it seems like at least a year. So uh, that, that's really helping out a lot of people. What, um, I would say, which company, if you don't mind me asking, would be, be one of the ones that are, I would say, more likely to have packages that are going out to these the developing countries, um, if if that's okay to ask. Yeah, no, um, it would probably it might be, it's In and Out Burger. I would say In and Out. Yeah, and I've um, seen a lot of those. Maui Jim. Yeah, Maui Jim. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. And then, again, the if you look at our our customer base, we're distributed in Maui. We're distributed in the restaurant business. We're distributed in the trades. Um, our customer base is is broad over 40 years. Um, and again, depending on the size of the contract, um, you're gonna have one to three units in every 12 dozen that you produce, either from the, the incoming or from the manufacturing cycle. And we have to be honest, there's no perfect manufacturing cycle. Your employees are gonna make a mistake on a run now and again sure. and do something completely wrong that makes absolutely no sense. And you're gonna go, <laughs> I need to replace that immediately, and it absolutely doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. So that that attrition is 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 real to all to all manufacturing companies, and and sometimes um, that's just what happens along the way. So right. you try to our approach is try is try to take what could be perceived as a is a short term adversity or an economic adversity and convert it into something very good for somebody else. Exactly, which it did. Um, it's an excellent uh, business model you planned in there too, is to include that part of the, uh, that, and then make it a donation. I mean, donation specific, most people think about it, as you say, a mistake is a mistake, it's something that you can't get back, but when you give it to somebody, it's making a big difference and changing a lot of lives out there. It's nice to see some of your pictures, because <laughs> a lot of times you don't see where it goes. That's true, that it's is true. It's nice to have a little feedback. On now, it. part of the requirement is that these shirts actually go out of the country. Um, those, those shirts that are overruns or seconds? Correct. In other words... Uh, it, I guess eliminates the market potential overlapping. There's those. each, each uh, company really has its own uh, terms of contract and a lot of them uh, have clauses that have to do with, with uh, protection of copyright right. and protection right. of registered trademarks and um, a lot of them have clauses about destroying products or certificates of destruction within a certain period. Um, and we, we, did, we didn't think that was an appropriate approach to what would be a, con a viable consumer durable that might yeah. be somewhere else. Yeah. So we, we, we came up with a different model. And that's a great model. So you actually put into the contract then that you won't have to destroy it, but that these could be donated out. Well. Really, what it comes down to is they, their concerns are really more about conflict of interest, right. uh, someone using their goodwill or their image in an adversarial fashion, uh, having a negative impact on their their image or their of their company. Uh, but but a lot of these companies ha absolutely embrace their own uh, charities and their own fundraisers and actually have their own foundations. Mm -hmm. So they're. Their philosophy is part and parcel to uh, what we're trying to 
Yeah, just a yeah. different mechanism. Yeah. It's a, it's a different approach. No, so. it, again, a, a, excellent. And it seems that I haven't heard of a lot of companies like yours that actually includes that as part of the giving back, as part of the charity, as part of the contribution to helping humanity. Most of them do the destroy or... Yeah, I really can't comment um, on that because we, we try to keep our, our, our focus on what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it's, 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 it, it's a large enough project just to, keep, just to keep your own house in order. That's and, true. And, and to keep uh, your endeavors on, and, and in the correct fashion, operating right. in the correct fashion. Yeah, the reason I brought that one up though, there, there, we have viewers out there probably that have friends or people that are actually in the business like you, mm -hmm. um, not realizing that there would be that option, those opportunities that you have. So you've done an outstanding job of creating a model. I'm hoping that the world will see. So that's, that's well, a very if we good look one. at if we look at uh, the, the exchange of information, there's a new, you know, there's a new generation that is that is making conscious choices. I believe to be involved with ideas and concepts, they might be consuming less product, uh, but they they might be consuming it because it it has it has a cause or an idea or has an impact somewhere. So there's there's I think uh, a shift in in uh, the new generation coming up to oh, interesting. to have uh, a different perspective on things, um, and you, and they're. I think the health fitness uh, is a very real part of that that group. So you'll you see a large number of 10Ks, 5Ks, bicycle events, and they're all consuming this kind of product uh, in the act of raising money or being involved with a cause. And every one of them feels pretty good about. It. Sure. They're choosing to be involved with those endeavors, mm -hmm. and this is the product that's associated with those endeavors. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. Part of the marketing, I would guess or anticipate, because it does uh, highlight the event specific. Right. And the graphic part, as you say, it's a walking. It's, walking. It, uh, it's specific to the to to that particular event or or their identity, but but either way, a lot of them. There's a lot of money that is raised through those events that go directly into uh, research for diseases, for the cure of diseases, and, mm -hmm. and also causes that are that are. Um, that are in society that need to be addressed. Right. Um, well, we, uh, we would we're love to be we're, faster. We're interconnected. Somehow. And love to have you in Rotary, by the way. You've done outstanding things. Uh, heart and soul is out of service, so we appreciate that. You bet. And with that, uh, thank you, John, for joining us. You bet. And for the rest of you, uh, take a look at those uh, those shirts that you'd be wearing. Uh, actually, if you have a twin sister, or twin brother, someplace out there that's benefiting people around the world. People like John are out there and things that he does uh, could also be replicated by a number of other organizations and groups. With that, thank you very much and we will see you next time.